Are you one of the millions of new gun owners? Did you go and buy a pistol? If you bought a pistol, did you buy a Glock? Some people love Glock, some people hate Glock. I was raised on Glock and I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. So uh, I have other guns also and other you know brands and manufacturers and styles and whatnot, but I really, I, I like Glock a lot. I trust Glock a lot. Um, they're very easy to use, very easy to maintain, um, and they go bang when they're supposed to go bang. Very little malfunctions. They run pretty, uh, even pretty dirty. They require very little uh, maintenance or lubrication. And it's just such an easy pistol uh, to use, which I guess is why more and more agencies and worldwide uh, law enforcement and military are moving over to Glock. Uh, some aren't, but, but it seems, in, in my opinion, most are. And uh, it shows also in the new gun owners that are coming in and saying, hey, I bought a Glock, could you teach me how to use it? So before I bring anybody to the range, especially if they've never shot before, we always make sure we do a safety lesson. I wanna make sure they know all the, the cardinal rules of firearm safety, all the different parts of the gun and how the gun's supposed to work. And this is all before they're even introduced to live ammunition. So we use dummy rounds and you know, this is what this is called and this is what that's called and this is how this works and this is what you're supposed to do. And we're gonna go through all that stuff right now because I teach it very often and it's, uh, if that many people are calling me up and asking for it, there's gotta be way more of them out there uh, looking for the same information. So uh, let's get after it. What's up, Warriors? This is Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training, here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome and thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media and that's how you find your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and YouTube will let you know when the next video drops so you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. One quick note before we start, um, I have a handful of uh, firearm videos already up on our channel, so feel free to check them out. You know, firearm safety and which firearm is best for home defense, and there's a few of them. But anytime we address any sort of firearms um, safety or any of that stuff, we, we check, double check, triple check, quadruple check that our firearms are safe and empty. So on the table, I have uh, a few different Glock pistols. There's no live ammunition in the building. Everything we're going to be using today is dummy rounds. Uh, just make sure that if you're following along with this, that all live ammunition is far away from wherever you're going to be checking out your gun, learning about your gun, messing with your gun, and, and learning with your gun. So for now, if you're going to be doing anything at home like cleaning or gunsmithing or, or, or maintenance or any of that stuff, live ammunition is always like not just on the other side of the table, but like in a different room. Remember that firearm safety starts with you. All right, so in front of us we have four Glock nine millimeter pistols. So this is the Glock 17. It's their full size pistol. It holds up to 17 rounds. This is the Glock 19, which is their compact model. It holds up to 15 rounds. This is the Glock 26, which is their subcompact, which holds up to 10 rounds. And then this is the Glock 43, which is also a nine millimeter and basically the same size as the 26, except it's a little bit thinner and it's what's called a single stack, which I'll explain to you in a moment. Each one of them is a nine millimeter and one of, the way I have them each sitting out is I have the slide lock to the rear and the ejection port pointed up. So it lets anybody walking by know that each of the magazines are empty. There's no, no ammunition present. Um, if the slide is locked to the rear and there's no round in the chamber, like it, it just lets somebody, a firearms instructor, um, a range safety officer, the guy at the gun store, whoever, it lets them know that the gun is safe and empty. I do have some dummy rounds and I always keep them in a clear plastic bag so that I can inspect them before I even open the bag to make sure there's no live ammunition in there. And dummy rounds are used for a lot of different purposes. We'll use them today so I can show you how to load, unload, and uh, you know, use them for practicing so that you could do this at home without, you know, there's no ammunition, there's no primer, there's no projectile. They're shaped like bullets, the actual nine millimeter rounds, but they're not real. They don't go bang, nothing comes out. They're just used for practice, they're, for, they're training rounds. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close each one of them up so I could show you. I went to the range, so they're probably a little bit dirty, which shame on me, that's kind of a no-no. But I'm going to just move the, the magazines out of the way for a moment so we could look at just the, um, 
just the pistols, okay? And there's a pretty cool thing about the Glock design. So, the full-size gun, this is what I carry for work, my police job. I was given the choice between the 17 or the 19. They just said, hey, you know, put each one in your hand, see which one feels better, and the 17 felt better in my hand. And I do like that it carries more ammunition than the 19. Some people prefer the 19, some prefer the 17. I prefer the, the, the 17. Bigger, big, I don't have huge hands, but um, it felt more comfortable for me. Now, here's the thing. When you put them side by side or one on top of the other, the 19 is a little bit, the handle is shorter and the barrel is shorter. The, the muzzle, the length, the slide, this part here is a little bit shorter. Now check this out. So is the 26. Now the 26, they're a subcompact model. Much shorter handle, much shorter barrel. When you compare the 26 to the 19, Again, shorter handle, shorter barrel. But the cool thing about um, Glock pistols is that the way they designed it is the trigger guard and the trigger assembly and all of that stuff is basically the same. So the way, the, the way your hand fits around the handle, maybe not the pinky part of your hand, like I feel like my, you know, there's too much of my hand hanging off the end. Even with the, with the 19, I feel like my, I don't know where to put my pinky, whereas the, the 17, feels good in my hand for me. Um, but the trigger guard is the same. If you put them all side by side, so here's the biggest one and the smallest one, and if you look at them, the handle is the same thickness, like circumference, and the trigger guard is the same. So it, it actually works out pretty good for when you learn how to like hold the firearm and aim and, and all the fundamentals of you know firearms marksmanship, it makes a very easy transition that you could pick up any one of them and use it relatively just as easily as another. You may feel a little bit awkward where your pinky goes, but uh, the, the handling is very, very similar. That's one. Another thing that I like about these is that, so with the exception of the Glock 43, and I'll explain to you what a single stack is in a moment. So this is the magazine. Again, they're magazines, not clips. Don't be that guy. Uh, the magazine for the 26, the magazine for the 19, and the magazine for the, the 17. So coincidentally, the 17 holds 17 rounds, the 19 holds 15 rounds, and the stock magazine for the Glock 26 holds 10 rounds. Now you could take, because they're, they're, the handle is the same circumference, the same grip size, the same all that stuff, all the magazines are interchangeable down. And what I mean by that is, so a magazine slides in and clicks into place. You have a, a magazine release, which drops the magazine out the bottom. I could take a bigger magazine and put it into a smaller gun. So if you wanted to carry a 26 and use a, a Glock 19 magazine, which holds 15 rounds, you could. You could carry a Glock 26, like I carry this off duty, and I carry a spare 17 round magazine, and it fits. In fact, depending on which state you live in, this is a 31 or 32 round magazine. Well, guess what? It's a nine millimeter, mag nine millimeter magazine, and that fits right in there too. Looks gordy, feels gordy, but it fits. So. You can't take a smaller magazine and put it into a larger gun because when this is loaded with bullets, it doesn't, it doesn't reach far enough up to feed the pistol. So a larger magazine can go into a smaller gun. A smaller magazine cannot go into a larger gun so long as they're all the same caliber size. So these are all nine millimeters. They all carry nine millimeter magazines, nine millimeter rounds, and the magazines are interchangeable down. So the bigger magazine goes into the smaller gun, no problem. Now, the Glock 26 and the Glock 43. Check this out. So the Glock uh, 26 and the Glock 43 are basically the same size, like height and length. The difference is in their, uh, the width of the gun. So 
to explain this a little bit better, this is a Glock 26 magazine. This is a Glock 43 magazine. The way the magazine, the the rounds, the cartridges, the bullets sit in here. If you notice on the back, there's like two holes, two sets of holes, which like you could see through to see how many bullets are in there, and there's little numbers beneath them. This is a double stack, which means that the way the bullets are, um, when you load the magazine, they basically sit in there in like this. This is like an over <laughs> dramatization, I you know, because they definitely sit tighter. Oops. To give you an idea, that's what's called a double stack. That's how they sit in the magazine. A single stack, they're not quite in a straight line, but close. And it's done that way so that you could have a thinner handle. Unfortunately, the downside is that it holds less rounds. So the Glock uh, 26, again, I, I have this with a pinky extender. This pinky extender is just so that when the magazine is in there, my, my pinky sits better on, I feel like I have better control of the firearm. The one that I carry, typically it's, it's at home because it's loaded. Uh, there's not just a pinky extender, but the floor plate, the bottom part of the magazine follows that same line of the pinky extender so you could fit a couple more rounds in there. So this magazine holds 10 rounds. The one I have at home holds I think 12 or 13. So out of the box, the Glock 26 magazine holds 10 rounds and the Glock 43 magazine holds 6. So again, you know, for what they call printing, when you put this like you're going to conceal carry this, meaning under your shirt, under your jacket, uh, in your waistband, in your, you know, around your ankle or whatever. When you have like that bulge protruding from your clothing and in the shape of a gun, that's what you call printing. So a thinner gun will print less. Some people like that. Some people just like that this is a thinner gun. It fits better in their hand. But again, it holds less rounds. The Glock 26 and the Glock 43, basically the same length, basically the same height. But when you look at them side by side, the width is not even that noticeable until you have it in your hand, and that's when it's a little bit more noticeable. All right, so the first part of our nomenclature is, or the, the names and the parts, the names that go to each part of the gun, this is a magazine, not a clip. I said that earlier, but it's a magazine, not a clip. Clip is a completely different type of loading system, but for a semi-automatic magazine-fed pistol. We call these magazines not clips, just so you know. The way to load a magazine, so the bottom part down here is called a floor plate. The part that there's like a spring under here, so that's called a follower. Again, these are dummy rounds. The way you load a magazine is you take the cartridge in your hand. Um, I like to hold the magazine in my non-dominant hand. I usually put my pinky underneath just so I have a good grip on it. I hold it so the, the holes are the back. Um, that's the back of the bullet, that's the front of the bullet, in case you're not sure. Um, I hold the bullet in my hand, I hold the magazine so that the front is going toward my fingers. Uh, the back of it is in the palm of my hand. Using my thumb, I push down and slide the round back. Take the next round. Um, they make tools to help you do this. You know, I, I don't use them, but, you know, if you're having a hard time with it, there's tools out there. I think the Glocks actually come with one uh, when you buy it new. It'll come in the box. But I use my thumb to push, kind of like get this going down a little bit. Hold this firmly in my hand. I push the bottom part of the round on top of the, the round that's already in there to kind of like push it down, slide it back. Push down with my, the hand that's holding the magazine. Hold push it down, slide it back. For a lot of people, when they first start doing this, you know, it starts to hurt your thumbs a little bit. It's like anything else. If you never did it before, it takes some muscle memory, it takes some practice, but you'll get it. And the way to do it is practice it. And the way to practice it is go to Amazon or wherever and buy a bunch of snap cap or dummy rounds and practice loading magazines, unloading magazines. Loading magazines, unloading magazines. Whoa, they always go flying. All right, but that's how you do it. Magazine, follower, floor plate, magazine. Okay, moving right along. 
When you first take a look at your Glock pistol, you'll notice uh, a few things. Obviously, this is the trigger, this is the rear sight, this is the front sight, that's how you aim. This is the handle or the grip. This is the magazine release or the magazine catch. So you have your magazine is seated in there. I'll do it opposite just so you can see. I usually activate that with my thumb. Push that button, magazine slides out. It's a spring-loaded button and gravity is what basically lets the magazine fall out. So when the magazine is seated correctly, again, that's the back with the holes in it. The front is where the bullet should be pointing. And you feed that in and you push it till it clicks. When you want to eject it, you push the magazine catch. Out comes the magazine. This is the back strap. This is your trigger. Okay, this is your slide stop lever. So I'm going to do this lefty. I'm not a lefty, but um, there's like ridges on the, the top back of the slide. I like to monkey grip. So I always learn this as lobster claw and monkey grip. So I uh, lobster claw, monkey grip like this way. So what I try to do is I just grab it. Pull the slide back, and by lifting this switch, not in, but upward toward the slide, it's weird to do it backwards. Let me try it lefty. I'll never, my instructor's a lefty, I don't understand how he does it. My wife is a lefty, I don't understand how she does it either. She pulls it this way, which I, don't, I think is weird, but my... My uh, main instructor, he does it that way too, so it's hard to argue with that. But basically, you slide the slide back and you push the slide catch up toward the slide. It's not in, it's not down, it's not back. Um, it's a switch that goes up and down. So, this is the barrel or the muzzle. That's the hole in the front where the bullet comes out. Down here is what's called an accessory rail, so you could put a light or a laser. You know, you check the laws in your area on what you're allowed to have on the front of your gun. But um, that's an accessory rail. You have your slide lock, so there's a switch right here on the side, on both sides, and you need to use that to take the slide off when you're going to clean, uh, field strip, you know, inspect your firearm. You need to uh, use that, that slide lock lever, which we'll, uh, we'll check out in a second. A couple spots to really pay attention to is it's important that you know your firearm serial number or, or keep it documented somewhere. So your firearm serial number will be on the side of the gun and the side of the, the oh my god, the barrel. Another spot, it'll be on the bottom, on the frame. So for Glocks, it's in three spots. You basically have it on your, your barrel, your slide, and your frame. So this whole plastic polymer part is your frame. There's your trigger, your trigger guard. This is the part that protects the trigger from, uh, you know, accidentally you know, hitting it. In the middle of a trigger on a Glock is a safety. So if I were to try and pull the trigger from the sides without pushing this little switch in the middle, it won't depress. Where, you know, that Glocks don't have safety like a switch on the side. There are a few built-in safeties, and that's one of them. So you have to pretty much have your finger inside the trigger guard on the trigger to have the, uh, to depress the trigger. On the other side, again, you're going to have your, your model number, your caliber. Um, obviously, it says Glock in Austria where they're made, but um, the model Glocks come in generations. So this is a Gen 4. They're up to Gen 5. Uh, the Gen 5s are pretty cool. I got to uh, you know, mess with them a little bit. But um, you'll have your model number, the generation, um, and and the caliber, which is really important because you, the caliber is also going to be on the back of your magazines also. So you want to make sure that the proper magazine is going with the proper gun and the proper ammunition is going in the proper magazine. Otherwise, you have all sorts of issues. So always check your magazines. Check your, that your magazine matches your firearm. Your firearm matches the ammunition and everything is all, all grooving together. Again, feel free to like, you know, rewind, pause, take notes, any of that stuff. I'm moving kind of fast, and, and my, my videos are always longer than I want them to be. 
Um, but it's important information, especially if you're, you're learning this for the first time. So let's say we had a loaded firearm, right? So right now, this is safe and empty, and the slide is locked to the rear. Um, there's no magazine, there's no round in the, in the magazine well, there's no round in the chamber, okay? So if the slide is forward and I insert a magazine, now it's loaded, right? Because there's, there's ammunition in here. It's not charged because I put the magazine in with the slide already forward. So there was no way for the round to get up into the chamber. So it's loaded, but what's, it's what's called not charged or uncharged or whatever. Right now loaded, not charged. Once I rack it, well now it's loaded and charged. That motion of racking the firearm basically puts a round from the magazine into the chamber. If it was live ammunition, you pull that trigger, it's gonna go bang, a round will shoot out the front, the, the empty brass casing, the shiny part on the side, jumps out the side and it feeds another round in. So if you have a firearm, rule number one about firearm safety is treat every firearm as if it is loaded. Um, until you know otherwise, until proven otherwise, we assume that every firearm is loaded. So like if we're at the range and I see a gun sitting there like that, total red flag, because in my head, it, of course it's loaded and charged. All somebody has to do is walk over and pull the trigger and that's how accidents happen. So we make this safe and empty by first ejecting the magazine. So remember we have this button on the side, we push that button, out comes the magazine. So now, all right, there's our ammunition source, that's out. Now the question is, is, is it safe and empty? Well, I see there's no magazine in there, so I know there's no ammunition in here, but I'm not sure of whether or not there's ammunition in the chamber, and that's an issue. That's a red flag. So what we do is, finger off the trigger, we're going to pull the slide to the rear. Well, holy cow, that thing was loaded. Now, if I let it go forward, one, I know the magazine is out, no magazine, right? I racked it, and the round that was in there came out, just to be sure we... Rack it again, nothing came out. Rack it again, nothing came out. Triple check, nothing came out. And the way that I would make it so that I know and anybody walking by would know is I'm gonna pull the slide back. I'm gonna push the slide catch up. So I pull it back and then, it's hard for me to show you this angle, but I use my thumb to push this button up and that's what holds the slide to the rear. So again, when I place this down on the table or the bench or whatever, the magazine is out. All right, so there's the ammunition no, not, not near the gun. The slide is locked to the rear, showing me that obviously there's no way for a bull to be seated in there, seated in the chamber if the slide is locked to the rear. And then I place it down so that somebody could walk by and inspect that without even touching it. They just walk by, they see no magazine, slide locked to the rear. They could peek in from here and notice there's no round. Peek in through here, there's no round. Safe and empty. Now, if you wanted to load your firearm, if it's in this condition where you have the slide lock to the rear, you would take your magazine, a loaded magazine, you insert the magazine till it clicks, and the, the instructional way to do it is that you pull the slide back, and I keep my fingers clear of like under here, I kind of grab it from the top, you see that I grab it from the top, so that no, nothing's kind of getting caught up in, in this section here. I pull it back and let it let the slide go. When I do that now, there's a, the magazine is in, assuming there's, there, I saw there was ammunition in here, so it's loaded. I racked it so I know that it fed a fresh round into the chamber, so it's both loaded and charged. Again, if I were to push the magazine release and take the magazine out, now it, the ammunition is out, but again, I don't know. We know, because we're watching, that there's a round in there. But again, never assume that it's safe and empty just because the magazine's not in there. Again, we're gonna rack it. Oh, that was loaded. Double check, triple check, quadruple check, pull. Use your thumb to push the slide catch up. Lock it in place. Safe and empty. No magazine. Nothing in the, in the uh, magazine well. Nothing in the chamber. I place it down, ejection port. Facing up, hands off, back away, safe and empty. Okay, you want to clean your weapon? We're not going to go over how to clean it, but i got to show you how to at least field strip it, take it apart to inspect it, clean it, oil it, 
all that good stuff. In order to do that, you're going to have to make sure that you pull the trigger on your gun. So we make sure, again, that it's safe and empty. There's no magazine. There's no rounds in the chamber. We visually and manually inspect. We look away. We visually and manually inspect again. Safe and empty. We let the slide go forward. We point the firearm in a safe direction, which is away from people. Depress the trigger. You change your grip from holding the grip on the gun. I keep my this part of my hand still in the back strap and the beaver tail up here. I just shift my hand or I roll my hand upward to kind of grab the slide. So my thumb is still in the beaver tail, but the rest of my fingers are on the slide and I pull it up. I pull the slide back about a half an inch or so. You have your slide lock on each side. There's one on this side, there's one on this side. I pull it back and I pull those downward. That's your frame. That's your spring. That's your barrel. And those are, that's as far as your field strip you're going both for cleaning and maintenance, anything beyond that. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> don't mess with it. We'll have another video on how to clean it, but to reassemble it, you take the slide and the front sight is the one with the one notch. You take your barrel. There's two holes if you look in the uh, just under the front sight. The barrel goes through the top one. Slide it back till it kind of drops into place. You take your spring. There's a shiny part and a black part. Put the black part through the hole beneath the barrel. And when you push this in, you push it down till it clicks. Your frame has two metal rails on the front and two little metal rails all the way by the back. Your slide has these two grooves and the grooves, or the, the slide rather, the rails fit into the grooves. There you go. Hold it, rack it. Again, we know it's empty. The way we, we check it, trigger works. Hold the trigger down when you rack it again. Let it out slow, wait for the click. Pull the trigger again. Safe. Ready. And that's your intro to Glock for Beginners. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comment section below in case I missed anything. If I said something different than you learned it, let me know. If you have a different name for something that I did, let me know in the comment section below. But again, just do this with ammunition totally far away. Be totally safe. Be totally careful. Um, and, and get expert help. If you're not sure how to do it, ask somebody who does know. And, and don't try anything without getting proper instruction first. Remember that firearm safety begins with you. So remember, there are a variety of different calibers that you could choose. There are a variety of uh, size pistols that you could choose for whichever fits your hand best and which you feel most comfortable uh, you know, holding and, and just wrapping your hands around, for lack of better terms. Remember that when you learn, get some qualified instruction. You know, More important than just buying the gun and getting the ammunition and getting the targets and the ears and eyes and all the safety equipment is getting some really good instruction. Like, take the time to learn how to use it, especially if you bought it for home defense or, or personal defense. Man, don't, don't learn it from a video. You get a lot of cool stuff from a video, but you need a qualified instructor who's gonna spend some range time with you, watch you one-on-one, -on -one, and make sure that you're doing everything right, and most importantly, safe. Make sure that you're keeping your, your firearms locked away safely, that you're, you're taking care of them properly, and that you're keeping them away from curious eyes and minds to make sure that no accidents happen. Well, if you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching and preaching, Go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you got to have it, make sure that you hit the bell notification button so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find us on all social media platforms at 5 Elements Tactical. Well, that's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with 5 Elements Tactical Training. Thanks for watching.